So I always have a banana uh, ready to go during the show. I eat it during the, during the morning. Now, there's a new <laughs> study, though, that suggests I have more than just a banana. Yeah. I don't know if you could get it in during the show, okay. but at least some uh, more than just that. Here to talk more about those breakfast recommendations is our medical expert, Dr. Mindy Romero with SSM Health. Good morning. Good morning. First and foremost, are you following these guidelines yet? What's your uh, breakfast of choice? You're putting me on the spot. Sorry, I had to <laughs> ask the doctors, okay, what you have and then what you recommend. Maybe. <laughs> what is that saying? Say as I do, not. <laughs> exactly. Say as I do as I say, not as, as I, I do. do. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, of course, um, that's a great point. So. 30, 40% of Americans actually fall in my bad habit of skipping breakfast often. And you always hear the doctors and you know the moms say, eat breakfast, it's the most important part of your day. Now we have even some scientific evidence that shows us that. It's not just so much for to keep us sharp and to keep our mind going, but also to help obesity, to help weight loss, to help cardiovascular disease. So more and more studies are showing that we really should follow the old adage of eat breakfast like a king, lunch like a prince, and dinner like a pauper or a beggar. Um, but that's difficult to do because we live in a society where so much of our life revolves around family, celebration, mm -hmm. and dinner ends up being really that healthy, mm -hmm. heartful, full meal. Well, and, and on top of that, we are almost always in a rush in the morning. I mean, exactly. you is, I, I don't blame you at all <laughs> for not having an actual sit-down breakfast because Blames we're all so busy. <laughs> right, well, we're sitting down all morning. Yeah, well, <laughs> there you go, good point. But yeah, so this is not an easy task maybe for right. everybody and so some some helpful things that we can all do um, is really getting stacking your fridge or, or your house with some really healthy things so healthy granola bars maybe high in protein that have some carbohydrates can give you that glucose not really grabbing that donut or that chocolate that we also like to grab I'm looking at you Adam yes yes she was <laughs> she was looking right at you <laughs> but a banana is a, a banana is a great start um, definitely some juices are also helpful and nowadays there's even yogurt shakes mm -hmm. different types of things that are really high in protein but just a great start so all the studies are showing that really our glucose metabolism has so much to do with this and if you want to think of it this way this is not really how it works but the pancreas in the morning is awake insulin production can really help boost how we process our food and later as the day goes on at nighttime the pancreas is asleep and so how we process our food is different your glucose stays higher you're more likely to gain weight and unfortunately fall in that obesity category uh, so not coincidentally I'm sitting here uh, being targeted by my co-workers <laughs> at this moment we wanted to shift you over to this concept of, of a difficult work environment in all seriousness yeah. and the physical impact that mm -hmm. it can have on somebody what how is this manifesting itself so uh, we were just joking with you by the way we yes. weren't really no, I being, know I know I know <laughs> we weren't really being hostile but this is a study that shows unfortunately a lot of Americans are reporting feeling hostile work environments, feeling very stressed, feeling like they don't have enough time to accomplish what they need to accomplish. Um, the study does point out some things that uh, bosses, work environments, employers can do. So for example, one big thing that can be done is to really set a good standard from the top down. So if you have a supportive boss, for example, this is gonna set the tone for the entire company or department that says we need to treat each other with respect. We need to provide a supportive work environment. We need to really help each other out. The study that we're basing all these recommendations off of actually compared unemployment to people that recently became employed hmm. but reported that their job was not either as satisfying or was stressful things like that so the question that was asked was were the unemployed people that were continuing to be unemployed were they having healthier happier lifestyles or was it the people that recently sought employment but had really a stressful kind of Debbie Downer situation. Mm -hmm. Really, it was the people with the jobs that had the Debbie Downer situation. Then That's there was funny. a third category of people that were employed but very happy with their jobs. They had better work-life balances. They reported being mm -hmm. more productive. So all in all, really, this is motivation for employers to say we need to provide a good environment because people will be more productive. More productive and more healthy. Yeah. We like it all. Dr. Mara, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Appreciate nice to it. See you. Nice yeah. to see you too. News 3 this morning. We'll be right back.